Hi everybody, I hope you're well. I have two images here and these images are interesting because they're both the same data. They're the same data and one of which has a flat field which is this one here. That has quite a nice flat field. There is a light pollution gradient going from here and then darker over there. And this one, same data remember, has been stacked differently and I could not work out why when I originally stacked it what was different about this and then somebody said something I put online on Facebook why won't my images stack together I'm always plagued by it not stacking and then someone said are you using bias frames and I thought to myself well no I'm not because I always believed that bias frames were not necessarily needed for CMOS cameras and I'm completely wrong, completely and utterly wrong, because bias frames made that image there, which is a flat field, apart from the light pollution gradient, which can be removed. The way in which we stacked this to make this work is we actually put one of the flat dogs or dog flats into the bias, just one, literally just one. And what that did was calibrate the lights and the darks properly so that when the flat frames were calibrated it was able to then calibrate the final image. The bias frame made all of the difference and I couldn't get my head around this. I just didn't understand it. So I've been doing a load of research to try and find out why. What you're seeing here is a bias frame on the left and a dark flat or a flat dark on the right. The bias frame is 3.73 seconds and the bias frame 0 0.005 of a second. So what I'm going to show you now are the K values for these two images. So if I click somewhere here it says K 0 0.0210 for the lightness. If I click here 0. 0203. They're virtually the same. And if you look at these images, if we zoom in, they look pretty much the same. And they're both taken with the same camera. I must make that point. They're both taken with the same camera. So they look pretty much identical. And the K value is 0 0.02 there. And the K value here is 0 0.02. So I would argue that a bias frame here on the right and a flat dark or a dark flat here on the left are pretty much the same, give or take very small amounts. When I stacked together my West Vale image, which we saw earlier, I put one of my dark flats or flat darks into the bias. That caused the field of view to be much flatter. So it got me thinking, what is going on in the stacking where the bias is having such a large impact because I always thought that you didn't use bias frames with a CMOS camera and I am wrong. So in my workflow, my previous workflow, I would take light frames which would contain the light information that I gathered and the noise and dead pixels and then I would take dark frames as well with my camera which in theory don't contain any light and have all the noise and dead pixels. And then I would subtract the dark frames from the light frames to in theory create a calibrated light frame. I would then calibrate those light frames with my flat frames which were calibrated with dark flats, so basically a bias signal. And in theory that should give me a calibrated master light, but in my case it was giving me an uncalibrated master light frame and there's a really good reason for that and that's because the noise in the light frames and the noise in the dark frames were different even with a cooled camera the noise in both of those is actually different and as a result even though the dark frame was subtracted from the light it left enough noise and enough inconsistency there to give me an uncalibrated light frame. So I then thought 
How is it meant to be done? And I looked in PIX Insight. Here I am in the weighted batch pre-processing script, WBPP, and I have loaded a few lights. It doesn't actually matter how many for this exercise. I've loaded some flats. I've then loaded some dogs and then corresponding flat dogs or dark flats, which are here, and they will calibrate the flats. And then I put some of those bias frames, which I took, which were 0 0.005 of a second, but I could have used the dark flats because as we've already seen, and you can just see behind, they're virtually identical. A bias frame and a dark flat are pretty much identical. So I loaded them all together and then I went to calibration. And we can see here that if I select the light here and then we go to optimize master dark, you can see when that's not ticked, the bias is not being applied. And when it is ticked, the bias is being applied to this frame. And PixInsight is really clever. So it gives you a diagram, show calibration diagram to try and explain what on earth is actually going on in this calibration diagram here. It took me ages to get my head around this. So if I go back into this PowerPoint here, so basically my light frames are a light frame which also contains noise and I'm going to call that noise A, so it's in red there, and it also contains the camera sensor bias noise, so that's the noise in that sensor. And then my dark frames contain noise B. Now I've deliberately done this in a different colour and a B at the end to show that it's different from the light frames noise because it is different, it is 100% different. And my bias signal there from the camera sensor. And the first thing that PixInsight is doing is it is subtracting the bias from both of those. So individually taking those and subtracting the bias. So we end up with a light frame which does not have bias, but it still contains noise A, that red noise A, and the gradients and dust. And then if you take a dark frame which contains only the noise B and the bias, and you take away the bias, you're left with just noise B. And then what PixInsight is doing, and if we look back in PixInsight, it has this weird K factor here, this K thing. And PixInsight is actually being really clever because it's doing some maths. It's looking at noise B and then it's timesing it by a K factor, this mythical K factor, which it determines to make noise B as near as it possibly can the same as noise A. And when it's got that noise A pretty much the same, it applies it to the light frame. And then your, not, your light frames basically have that noise A removed. So noise A is different from noise B and that K factor in Pix Inside that we can see, this K mathematics going on there is actually working out what it needs to times noise B by in order to create a light frame without that noise. Now this noise factor here is called a thermal frame that I found out and basically that thermal frame is caused by inaccuracies between the temperatures and other, in fairness, in other factors as well. It could be temperature, it could be the room you're in, it could be the fact it's outside. Um, so basically the light frame noise is going to be different from the dark frame noise. And PixInsight is able to do some maths and determine what the value of noise A is and then subtract it from your light frame. And then of course we take our flat frames which have the gradient and the dust and they of course are calibrated with our dark flats which could of course be bias as well. That's the same. And then it subtracts that and that finally leaves us with a calibrated master frame. Now 
this is really interesting because I never use bias frames. So basically, this bias and all of this maths here was not being applied to my images. And because my cameras are not consistent enough, even though they're cooled cameras, even though they are cooled, they are inconsistent enough to have different noise in them. And as a result, it was leading to having uncalibrated frames. So it's really interesting. If you now look, this diagram here is exactly the same as this diagram here. So if we go through this, we have our, our dark master and our lights here. And first of all, it removes the bias. But on the dark side, it removes the bias. And that leaves you with that thermal frame that we talked about, which is just the noise in your dark master. It's just noise. And then it compares that and does a bit of maths with this K factor here to make it the same as the noise from your lights. It then minuses that and then it takes the calibrated master flat because it's had its dark flats or flat darks, which is the equivalent of a bias removed. And then it finally calibrates the light frames. So if I now go back into my little PowerPointy type thing, so if I then go back to the beginning as to why my calibration is never working, my light frames, which do contain noise, have different noise to my dark frames. And as a result, when those are being subtracted from each other, even though they're being calibrated with my flat frames, I am still getting an uncalibrated master frame. And that is why from now on, I'm going to be using bias frames. When I originally stacked this information, this one was stacked in ASTAP. And ASTAP doesn't even have a bias tab. And I don't understand, even though I've Googled it and I've tried to understand how it handles bias signals, I can't get my head around how ASTAP is working. And as a result, I don't know if it's applying a bias or not. This one is from Deep Sky Stacker. And clearly, Deep Sky Stacker is applying a bias signal to create the flat field. So it is handling the data really well. And in PixInsight, as we've seen, it does that funky maths in order to apply the bias signal to create a flat field. Therefore, with all of my imaging going forwards, I know that my cameras are inconsistent with their noise. And I probably think the only way to determine if your camera is not inconsistent with noise is to do a test. So if you have a very new camera with, let's say, an IMX 571 sensor, or perhaps even a 533, I suspect that they are good enough to experiment with to see if you need a bias signal or not in your stacking. But I, for one, I have a 533, but it's a mono version, but I'm definitely going to use bias with this going forwards. Or because we've seen that bias frames and dark flats or flat darks are virtually the same as a bias signal, I'm going to use those in the bias column when I stack in Deep Sky Stacker or in Pix Insight, clearly that bias signal is critical to getting a flat field when you're stacking. I hope I've made some sense here. That was incredibly complex to be able to research. And if you got this far, thank you so much. I hope it improves your stacking and potentially if you have any more information, please whack it down in the comments because I've tried to get my head around that K factor and those thermal frames which are created. And there's quite a lot of information in there. So I hope it was useful. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all soon.